there was a moment when I realized this isn't about what's going on. This is about me. This is, I mean, I can blame and I can shame and I could uh, point my fingers and I could tell you story after story. In fact, I told the stories and just told them so much. I got tired of hearing myself telling the sad stories. And in there, at some point I realized this is not about anything outside of me. This is all only about and for me. Welcome to the Serve Love Lift podcast. I'm Tiffany Garvin. Years ago on a quiet beach in Hawaii, I felt the weight of the pain and struggles we all face in this world and how much we need each other. Soon after, this movement was born to serve, love, and lift. I believe that we are meant to serve the world with our unique gifts, love ourselves and others, and lift each other up to live with joy. This podcast is here to help you heal your heart and your life and empower you on your path to becoming the best version of yourself. I invite you to listen carefully and jot down notes that come to mind, whether they come from me or from your own heart. Then share this episode with three people who you feel could use it today. I'm so glad you're here. Let's get going. I'm so excited for today's episode. I get to interview one of my favorite people in the world. Shane Thompson is a former university professor, coach, trainer, speaker, and principal of Resonance Coaching and Development. He works with individuals and organizations who want to live, love, and lead with greater authenticity. His goal is to empower his clients with the knowledge and skills they need to move their lives forward and improve performance in sustainable ways. He does this by incorporating energetics and spiritual principles and practices into his coaching and corporate training programs. Thank you for being here, Shane. Welcome to the show. (laughs) Thank you for having me. I wanted to bring you on so that our audience can glean from you some of your heart, your love, and the wisdom that you have gained through your challenges. You have such wonderful, such wonderful things to say that I know you're going to be a blessing to those who are listening. So what part of your story would you like to start with? How about today? <laughs> Love it. Uh, it's, it's live. It's raw. It's Every moment, every day is something new, something different, if I'll let it. I spent so many years stuck and struggling and ruminating in what was behind me that I never really lived, really never lived in the moment. And I don't mean that in some kind of really cool rock star way. Um, (laughs) I mean, just... You know, it's fall here in Indiana and uh, the leaves are gorgeous. And I went on my balcony yesterday and I got lost in the sky and the and the crickets and the breeze. And uh, the, the problem with that is I was on a phone call with a friend and I completely dialed out. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> while I, yes, I was, I was present, uh, but I shift the place I was present from my friend's conversation to, um, the great outdoors. But even in that uh, slip up, I could say is tremendous progress in my life and living, really just living. I love it. There's something that you've talked to me about that has been a key to you being able to move forward. And where most of the world runs away from their pain runs away from fear and old trauma and wounds and the struggle that we feel because we don't like to hurt. We don't like to feel sad. We don't like to feel afraid. We don't like to think about difficult experiences. 
you have discovered through remarkable strength and willingness to dive into the hard that when you allow the pain to go through you, when you allow yourself to sit in it and let yourself feel it and even teach you that there is a beauty and a deeper healing that's possible. Yeah, I think maybe the first moment of, of awareness was in uh, the really emotional roller coaster of my divorce. At some moment, it, it had become so absurd, all the pain and all the things going on, that there was a moment when I realized. And, and, and who knows, maybe I read this a hundred times in a hundred different books on spiritual growth and personal development and philosophy and, and good people in my life, good and wise people, I'm sure had told me 10 or 20 times, but some moment crystallized in my awareness, this isn't about what's going on. This is about me. This is, I mean, I can blame and I can shame and I could uh, point my fingers and I could tell you story after story. In fact, I told the stories and just told them so much. I got tired of hearing myself telling the sad stories. And in there, at some point, I realized this is not about anything outside of me. This is all only about and for me. It was somebody, a good friend said the other day, and I think I heard it somewhere, but said, life doesn't happen to you it happens for you okay. and i hate cliches and <laughs> i hate platitudes <laughs> uh, but boy sometimes you can't get away from the truth when it just nails you pema children says sometimes the truth just nails you where you are and you can wiggle on that like a like a butterfly on a pin you can wiggle and try to get away <laughs> or you can just stop and let it be what it is and it's david r hawkins who taught me about letting go not about letting go of your attachments that's too big that's too big a step for me or letting go of my attitudes and perspectives and my beliefs well those are all my attitudes perspectives and beliefs then they're too integral to my habits of thinking and my personality to just decide oh i'll let that go because i don't think those beliefs are detachable until i realize they're detachable <laughs> what he taught about letting go was just sit when the emotions come don't allow your thoughts to attach because our mind this magnificent mind we have is always trying to make sense of our surrounding. It's trying to make meaning. It's trying to connect the dots, to create a net that it can accept or solve or, uh, or combat against. And all of those are just strategies that our egos use, right? Our consciousness uses to make sense of the world, to make it less frightening or less painful. And that's, part of the, the tangle, part of the stuckness is using this excellent mind and our strategies and theories and models that we learn. And they just get me wrapped more and more around the same axle. And as I have practiced letting it come up, I feel it move up through my body and the emotion or the, the frightening feelings or a discomfort. And as I've learned that one, they don't annihilate me, not really. Maybe in some way they annihilate parts of me that need to go. Mm -hmm. But if I'll just sit, like literally sit and let the feelings come up, watch them, sense them, feel them, acknowledge them. And I don't have to make friends with them. I'm not that far along. I don't know if it's even necessary. But if I just let them move, the flow of energy without clothing it in the debris of the stories, of the catastrophes, they just move and they leave me, they leave me better. They leave me less burdened 
And now they may come up over and time and time and time again. But if I, as I learn to not resist them or try to make them be something else, then they just move on better. Mm, I love that. When you say, just let them be what they are, not make them something else. That that struck me because like you said, with our mind trying to make sense of everything, I totally believe that. I wonder if as we process life, as we go through life, we are constantly changing what things are as they enter our space in order to work for us, comfort us, like you say, and adjust them in a way that allows them to fit in our space. But allowing them in just as they are, it seems like they can be more effective at shifting the things inside of us that need to shift and not putting a limit on where we are willing to change in the moment because change is scary, right? Yeah, my impulse, my first thought is get away from the pain yeah, and, and the discomfort. And now I, that still comes to mind, but what that now is an indicator, oh, here's an invitation to sit. And I will grumble and I will kick the trash can and I will get mad about it because I don't want to sit and suffer. Right. Uh, but I also know that it is futile to resist. <laughs> so even then, as I sit, I, I just notice and I let it move. And then sometimes there might be a message, but I don't excavate it. I don't hold it down by the throat and say, teach me. <laughs> because sometimes it just needs to move and it's like let me go and i'll be gone forever and at times something will arise and it has a different texture different substance and then there's an, an awareness that there's an invitation to learn or i can intentionally i can bring modalities of healing to bear and i can heal myself of this thing uh, so there are a lot of ways to do, but my default now is let it be, let it rise. And, and then if I have an intuitive hit or guidance to do something with it, to transmute it or metabolize it or pick a cool verb, mm -hmm. then I will. Otherwise, my initial posture is to allow it. I love that. Pure and simple, as purely as I can, just allow it. Yeah. What is inside of you that was so strong to allow you to perceive it this way, to finally recognize it and let it happen? Because I think there are a lot of people listening who are feeling, I can't do that. I'm not strong enough to sit in the pain. How did you come to be able to do that? One of superpowers is how unremarkable a human being I am. <laughs> I'm I'm a gritty dude who likes to wear blue jeans and boots everywhere I can get away with it. And everything's fueled by my heart. And I didn't I didn't the story the way I describe it sounds like I read a book and I sat down and started letting everything move like a Zen master. And that is not how it's happened. It, <laughs> I started out of utter desperation. I could not escape the pain. And the sources, the external sources of pain were violent and capricious and intentional to hurt me. So I was not in a quiet place where it was just me, myself, and I. No, there were external forces that sought to undermine my peace of mind and um, hurt me. And I could not fight or combat or negotiate with any of those external forces. So it drove me forcibly to the very, very center where there was nothing else I could control neither with techniques or strategies or intellect or experience or theory or strategies. I, I was left just 
me, just the bare me. And I had done everything I'd known. And it was a concession to just try something I'd heard of, but had scrunched my nose up like, yeah, that's not for me. That'll never work. It's, my stuff's too big. Mm. And what happened was there was there were a lot of sobs. And, <laughs> and maybe the first moment that gave me real conviction in the utility of this approach of letting go, letting it be, was <laughs> I was in mid sob and then it just stopped. Like someone reached over and turned off the spigot and I was on my hands and knees and it was snot and tears and gross. And then suddenly there was no more juice behind it. There was, uh, there were no more sobs and I stopped and I opened my eyes and I looked around like, what just happened? Where did it go? It was so serious. It was so huge, so overwhelming five seconds ago. Six seconds, seven seconds, eight seconds, nine seconds. Well, I guess, I guess, to, I guess I'll just get up <laughs> and move on with my day. And it left me in awe and in wonder. And then I knew that that could happen. I knew that if I gave it space, gave it room to express itself, it might just expend itself as mm. well. Yeah. And that experience has multiplied enough times that now I just move. When something moves inside, if I'm anywhere where I can just stop, turn off the TV, put down the book, I, I don't do it when I'm driving, right? But I'll know, oh, something's coming up. I'm feeling contraction inside. So some part of me is resisting to some other impetus or some other stimulus. So perhaps there's a memory working itself to the surface or uh, a sadness or a confusion or a fear. Um, something, Something's moving toward the surface. So I make a mental note, I need to sit down this evening or the next chance I have and just say, all right, let's have it. A curious phenomenon occurs, however, when you start to notice or when that mechanism inside of me begins to notice me noticing it, <laughs> it gets shy. Oh. Like it stops, like freeze tag. Like maybe if I hold real still, he won't see me. And that's been a curious experience. And I have learned to say, no, 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 no. Come on. It's okay. Just come on out. I know you want to move. I know you want to wiggle. Just come on out and let's see it and let's have it. And we'll go from there. No promises. But I promise not to shut you down. I promise not to deny you or reject you or, or force you to see things in my way. Just present yourself freely and I will accept your presence and your expression freely. And I keep that promise. Now, it doesn't mean I can't cuss and stomp and cry uh, because that's my, that's my option. I have to have my full free expression as well. Right. And, um, and they will, they'll come back out of the shadow. They'll come back out and they'll walk tentatively and I'll greet them. And sometimes they just walk by looking at me askance, like maybe I'm going to sneak out and grab them when they get past me, <laughs> but I don't. I just sit on my hands and I nod and smile and say, come on, move along. Come on. And my life has changed. The quality of my living has changed profoundly. And, and so sometimes in there, I stumble into self-awareness, like, oh my goodness, I, there's a pattern that I have been unaware of that I am repeating and it's not helpful or useful. Mm. Well, that definitely takes a profound sense of humility and surrender. Is, was that forced on you too? Because you've never been an arrogant person. So it's not that. Was it just the um, self-protection before that kept it from, from fully expressing? 
I think, yeah, I think that's it. I think you said that well, a self protection, right? The, the part of me, the protectors in me that say, I've got this little lad, you stand behind me <laughs> and, and then it doesn't help. They may protect me from a full frontal assault, but, but the house is still burning down. And as I've invited those protectors, Mike, stand stand next to me. Mm. Right? If it looks like it's going to get too bad, you can move in. But don't take my agency away. Wow. Pain has this way of recalibrating our nervous systems so that our nervous system has priority response. Like it responds faster than my conscious awareness. And it'll hijack all of my other systems of meaning making, right? All of my sensory input, my hands, very tactile, very touchy, um, but also my eyes and my ears, the things I hear. And then this excellent mind will strategize ad nauseum in such a subtle and sophisticated way that I believe my own junk. But while that's happening, the nervous system is already out the door and down the street. And, and then I, I've been hijacked. My system's been hijacked. My prefrontal cortex, right? My executive functioning, my brain, I can no longer uh, collaborate uh, with some I perceive to be posing a threat. Mm -hmm. and, and if I can't collaborate, then, uh, then I'm on my own. And if I'm on my own in a triggered state, I, right, I have nothing to work with. Right. So there's so many layers of systems that seek to preserve and promote our well-being yet they are calcified in past experiences and it seems to me that through this letting go it teases apart the fabric of all of those interwoven systems and it makes traditional psychotherapy feel clunky and while I'm very much of the union camp mm -hmm. in in all kinds of ways and that's been tremendously helpful and supportive to me um, the raw presence I share with myself and the expressions of my protective mechanisms has promoted the deepest healing and the greatest clarity of what life is for me. And this is outside of spiritual traditions or institutionalized religion or ideologies and philosophies. Those are, those are tools that can be used when I have my wits about me. But with all of that, where I have strategically retreated to the simple self with a big s just back to me and and even that and get too close without enough filters between me and myself uh myself starts to come apart mm. because it's only been held together by habits of perception and uh how i want to be seen and noticed and, and even that, how do I want to be seen and noticed? I want to be seen as a safe, steady, reliable, loving, gentle, masculine, intelligent man. Well, I don't know that anybody doesn't like the sound of that. <laughs> but the reality, the reality of how I walk through the world is, is not a list of adjectives and nouns with commas in between. Like, <laughs> it's messy. Like, I'm a dude. And, <laughs> and, you know, it's sometimes it's just messy and to protect me from the reality of messy attempts, things move in between me and myself and say, no, 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 no. Nothing to see here, folks. Shane is magnificent in every conceivable way. <laughs> Any challenge to that is going to provoke a protective response. Right. And totally. So getting behind the curtain or getting between the event and the interpretation and the, the judgment and get quick to the, to the me that biffed and say, I know, I know. And we're doing good work. We're doing a good job. 
you know, kind of like Saturday Night Live, right? <laughs> you're you're good. People like you. <laughs> Wow. Yes, yes. And I love the distinction that's being teased apart here, where the subconscious is a lot of what we're referring to here. It's mm -hmm. of all the levels of our body, the ones that respond to talk therapy, right? Those are one level. And then there's other levels that that we need to get to to really address trauma the mm -hmm. subconscious is where all of these wounds all of these programs all of these interpreters are set to respond to life to tell us what they mean to move us forward or hold us back it's in the subconscious that's why so many people struggle to fully heal in traditional therapy as great as it is and the value that it brings to the space where it can help is wonderful. I love to bring more people in to recognize this space, that if you find yourself getting stuck in traditional therapy, it will be helpful for you to know that that's not the only part of you that can be nurtured and treated and healed and loved and brought back from the depths, from the abyss. Absolutely, yes. So the, the subconscious, right? We talk about different healing modalities, uh, but I love that this just sitting with yourself is one way of communicating with our subconscious. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts, as a lot of people are listening to this who have experienced trauma and have thought that either talk therapy is the only way and it's pretty discouraging for them or they don't believe they can heal at all hmm. I'll, I'll work backwards i absolutely believe in the capacity to heal all in caps yeah. not just to manage and cope so yes manage and cope is the along the path but absolute restoration, absolute healing is possible. That is my belief. Yeah. I am not absolutely healed. And it's that is not a judgment against my capacity. It's just an awareness of my, my journey. Um, but yes, healing is possible. And it's possible for everyone. That's a bold statement, but what I have experienced in my own life and the work I do with others, sometimes in moments, we break through barriers that have locked them down for decades. Right. And, th and we are both amazed at how the right approach opened it up. Yeah. And what what I have I have felt at times overwhelmed, thinking, do I need to learn six thousand modalities so that mm -hmm. I can heal in every facet in every way? Well, well, if that's true, don't sign me up for that. <laughs> and you know, as you and I've worked together, you'll have clarity on a a, a model or an approach to healing some aspect of some of one of our systems and you'll lay it out in intricate, magnificent detail. And then I say, okay, you get three steps, three <laughs> steps, or I'm not using it. I'm not even going to try it. <laughs> Touching on what you said about the different modalities. It's an amazing journey that we've recognized over several years of working together that the value of recognizing your healing language is mm -hmm. really important to how you heal. So this can encompass talk therapy. It can encompass shamanic journey and it can encompass life above the line techniques, whatever, whatever modality it is that resonates with you, because that's the one where your subconscious is going to go, Oh yes, I'll take that. 
and it will listen and it will receive and it will allow healing to take place. So when we can work with someone and find out what it is that they need to be able to resonate with the process of healing, that's what's going to be most effective for them. And I think that explains a lot why people will go to a doctor or a chiropractor or some other modality and struggle to find healing. It's not that you can't heal. It's that you just need to find the way your body heals, the language your heart speaks in order to let go of the wound, to heal from your trauma. Well, thank you so much for this conversation. It has been beautiful and tender and inspiring. What one last message? would you like to share, whether it's to someone who is struggling with their trauma and trying to get through it, or or to the world in general to, to see trauma survivors differently? Be kind. Be kind to other people. Uh, Brene Brown said, treat everyone as though they're doing their very best. Their very best might not be good enough, and you may need to create some distance. But if you give everyone the benefit of the doubt that they're doing their absolute very best, that shapes my becoming more generous, more compassionate, kinder, more loving. That only nurtures the well-being of my spirit and the world by my presence in it that doesn't require training yeah that's wonderful thank you so much this has been a blessing (laughs) well you're welcome thank you for being with me Remember to share this episode with three people who you feel could use it today. Don't want to wait for next week for new insights and wisdom? Go to www.tiffanygarvin.com slash emotional healing for a free guide to help you begin healing the emotional wounds that are holding you back. Again, the link is tiffanygarvin.com slash emotional healing. It will be in the show notes as well. I believe in you. See you next week.